Hi everyone, my name is Inhaxed, and today we're going to be having a look at a game called Outer Wilds, uh, which is a new one. It's only recently been released, and I wanted to have a look at it. And here we are. I wonder what that was. It was like that ship exploded and something flew off. Like a blue energy something. An escape pod maybe? And those planets are moving really fast. Well that planet is moving really fast and the stars I should say. Here we are. Nice campfire, a sleeping bag, and someone to talk to. Oh, something I can do. Oh, I can roast a marshmallow. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. It's a puzzle. Let's see. Oh, okay. Extend stick, left shift. I successfully toast my marshmallow. Have I failed the first mission of the game? Oh, E to extinguish. Ah, oh, perfect. <laughs> oh, I did like the noise. I don't know what I achieved, but it was fun. Let's talk to Slate. There's our pilot, back from your pre-launch camp out under the stars I see. So it's launch day, eh? Seems like only yesterday you joined the space program and suddenly here you are, leaving on your first solo voyage. What do you say? Ready to get this beauty off the ground? It's all fueled up and ready to go. Can we have all systems go? Or I'm ready if you are? Or you're sure you fixed the retro rockets? I think I'm going to be positive and optimistic. Glad you're excited, but remember, if you wreck the ship, I'm not building you a new one. I'm not made of lightweight re-entry grade aluminium. Alloys, you know. Aluminum alloys. Anyway, you'll need to get the launch codes from Hornfels at the observatory before you can lift off. Just bring those here once you've said your goodbyes for whatever. That we will, Slate. I assume that goes to the launch tower. Which way? That looks a bit high, so we'll try this way. Jump and release. Jump and release. Who do we have here? This is Micah. Hey, it's you! Slate said you'd be blasting off in your ship today. I'm really excited to see the launch. Aren't you going to go into space? Aren't you? You better not have changed your mind. So I can say, hey, I'm still going. I want to practice with a pro before I leave. I hear you and Slate beefed up the model ship. Can I see it? I'm, just, I'm still going. You better be. It's been forever since anyone launched into space. I really, really want to see it really bad. Hey, you want to try out my model ship? Slate says it's like the real thing, only less likely to start a fire. Well, we could give it a go. Okay, take off time. Uh, left control. Right, right shift. Slate's up. Muffs it at the last moment. Oh, I'll give it one more try. Oh, 
<laughs> I hope that isn't something we have to do as a mission or I'm in trouble. Never mind. Let's get on. Launch tower, so that's right. I got the local brewer. Porphy. Hey yo, hatchling. I hear you're leaving us to seek adventure amongst the stars. When you return, let's you, me, and Gossen open up a bottle of the good stuff. I'm only seeking adventure amongst one star, actually. Other stars are too far away. Another metaphor ruined in the name of scientific accuracy. Nevertheless, I do hope you enjoy your travels. Good luck. That's the observatory up there. Oh, that's interesting. Let's keep going. Fish. Yeah. There's lots of people to talk to. Should I talk to all? Hello there, Space Cadet. I hear you're leaving the crater today. If you meet any of the other travellers up there, any other, any of the other travellers up there, remind them to take proper care of their instruments, won't you? Tell me about the travellers' instruments. Oh sure, I made all of their instruments, you know. Let me see. There's Chert's drums, Rybeck's banjo and Gabro's flute. And Feldspar's harmonica, of course. Though Feldspar's been missing for a long time. Sometimes it feels like just yesterday they were playing their harmonica around the campfire. Anyway, you hear music in space? That'll be one of the space program's other travellers. If you feel like company, you can always pull out your signal scope and track them down. Huh, interesting little hint, niece. What's down here? It's foul. More interesting things happening in the sky. Okay, Mal. So it's launch day, huh? How's going to miss you? Speaking of launch day, I was thinking about it, and the platform those ships launched from is getting old. Isn't it about time you build a new, less flammable one? That big tree in the village would be the perfect choice. I wouldn't mind helping out the space program. Just say the word. <laughs> Looks like he wants to cut the tree down and wants an excuse. The launch pad is flammable. Okay, we'll still go with the first one. The current launch pad is fine, thanks. Oh really? Dang. Well, maybe someone needs a new porch or something. A big one. Wonder why he doesn't like the tree. That's interesting. Outer Wilds, postcards from orbit. Teal. You're actually blasting off in that thing, huh? They really don't explode as often anymore. All I know is, between the space program and Mika's model rockets, things seem to burn to the ground around here more often than they used to. We've got a satellite camera. This projector is linked to our Sky Shutter satellite, which is currently orbiting Timberhearth. The satellite is equipped with two onboard cameras. See if you can take a snapshot of our village. Okay. Snapshot Oh, there we go. Got lucky there. Oh, didn't even keep it. Sorts of interesting bits and pieces. None of it interactive though, it looks like. Sign. 
This pilot seat, used by pioneering astronaut Feldspar, is all that remains of our inaugural flight into space. Although it's been argued such a distinction requires a breathtakingly liberal def definition of flight, that day will nevertheless always be remembered as a landmark achievement in Parthian history. Okay. And we've gone around, oh, we've gone around in a bit of a circle. That's good. Okay. Let's head over here. Hello, astronaut. If it isn't my favourite troublemaker. We wanted to play hide and seek, but Moraine won't let us borrow their signal scope because it's really delicate and not supposed to be thrown around like that. Hey, hey, can we use your signal scope? Can we? Can we please? We'll even let you be in. Sure, let's play. Woohoo! Okay, here are the rules. Galena and me will hide from these radios and you'll use your signal scope to find us. Last one to be found wins. Okay, close your eyes and start counting. Okay, so, fly to equip the signal scope. Change frequency and zoom in. Oh, we've got something. There we go. I can... Aha. Uh -huh. I think we have our friend. <laughs> Someone fishing? I guess I dropped down. Oh, you found me! The hiding spot was super don't forget, you have to find both, it's okay. Oh, I didn't release. <laughs> I've got to get used to that. It's not just pressing the space. You've actually got to release before you jump. Like that. Aha, uh -huh, there's our little friend. Oh. Hi, Galena. I won. I'm happy. Thanks for playing with us. No worries. To use my signal scope. Okay, back to what we were doing, which is launching the rocket. I think we want to go that way, where it says observatory. That's where the kids were sitting. Up we go. Oh, we haven't talked to the fish in yet, have we? Spinel. Fishing rhyme, fishing rhyme. Singing helps me pass the time. You're leaving the crater? Guess I will all be out of Museum without you around to lend a hand. That big water planet, giant steep, that's where I'd go. Why is that? One time after the rest of the village had left to sleep and it was just the two of us sitting around the campfire, Gavro told me about their first trip to the giant steep. To giant steep. They landed their ship easily enough on the waves but couldn't see too far down 
on account of how murky the water was, I guess. Too dark. Gavro wants to see what lay beneath the surface, so they decided to travel deeper. They travelled down and down. But suddenly, <laughs> I accidentally pressed. I want him to get on with the story, obviously. As though ex exercising a will of its own, the water was refusing to let Gavro go any deeper. It held Gavro back, almost as if it were trying to protect them from something. Then, in the terrible darkness, Gavro saw it. The tentacle of some hideous beast. <laughs> ah. I mean, that's what Gavro said, anyway. Whatever it was, it freaked Gavro out pretty good. Everyone wants to hear your new stories at the village campfire. You know. Make sure you bring some back with you. I'm sure I will. Try not to press the E button in the middle of dialogues I haven't read. Sorry about that, everyone. I don't think we missed anything crucial. Arcos. Hi, astronaut. You know the patch of ghost matter inside the fen this fence? Gossett said it used to be bigger than they when they were a hatchling, because ghost matter evaporates. Interesting. It just takes a super long time to go away. I hope there's still ghost matter in the village when I'm a grown-up. Ghost matter is awesome. Ghost matter is super cool. It'll burn the heck out of you. Yeah, I heard touching it hurts so bad it feels like your whole hand is on fire. Try not to walk into any in space, okay? That sounds bad and painful. Thanks, that's good advice. <laughs> Danger. Inside this fence is a pocket of ghost matter, a strange and impossibly cold substance that's invisible to the naked eyes. The good news is that you can detect ghost matter with a camera. Moving through ghost matter is uniquely painful and will probably kill you. Don't complain to me if you hurt yourself fooling around. We have a camera. Take a photo of... Ghost matter, I should say. Interesting. Zero G cave and observatory. Got to go and have a look up here, see what it is. Another camera set up. North Youngbark Crater. East Nomai Ruins. Okay, it must be places I can look at with the camera. Aim the launcher, launch a scout, take a snapshot. Okay. There's a rear snapshot as well. Oh, interesting. And then I crash into the ground. Kill. <clears throat> and then I can do it again. Must be the ruins. And a nice shot of the sun. Just makes me want to go and visit. So let's get going. I think there was a note here at the bottom that I missed. Yeah. I saw smoke coming from Young Bark Crater up north and I f and figured I should go check it out. You can use the scout launcher, just please don't break it while I'm gone. Oh. Didn't. Tech tight. Okay. 
so the zero G cave or the observatory. Let's have a look. Don't want to miss anything. So this is Gossen. Okay. Hey, I thought I might see you before the big launch. Nerves getting the better of you? Right, like you weren't nervous before your first flight. Hey, don't worry about it. Your nerves are between you, me, and the vast endlessness of space. But really, you'll do fine out there. I'd worry more about the sh that ship if I were you. Hopefully that lunatic slate has at least fixed the retro rockets. So listen, there's a satellite, which is definitely not just a piece of broken mining equipment, set up down in the Zero-G cave and in need of repairs. If you're looking for a little last-minute Zero-G practice, head down the lift and into the cave, or don't, so long as you're confident you can make ship repairs in space. I think I'll do it, just because I probably need the practice. Okay, cool, get to it, and try not to concuss yourself right before the first launch. I'll try not to. Okay, down here. Okay, ah, uh, flashlight is there. Better. Sparkly minerals in the cave walls look amazing though, like stars themselves. Zero G cave, zero G cave. Put on your equipment. Okay. So, where to from here? Oh, I've got to go up. Okay, so up, down thrust, left shift. No, oh, that's down thrust. There we go. Got to get that right. Talk to tough. Hey, hey, nice of you to drop down. I'm getting some zero G time in. So you're going in there, in the cave? What? No, I'm fine. Great. Great and fine. You don't look fine. Well, you know I hate that cave, so I don't know why you're making me talk about it. Phew. Now I've got the hand sweats. I think he doesn't like zero G, it might make him a bit sick, I think. Okay, down we go. Oh, luckily it is zero, or very low gravity anyway. 0.1 a G. And full zero G down there, I guess. Let's drop in and see what happens.
perfect. It's not much gravity, but it's some. Hey, you're back. You need something? Give me the dirt. Guess where I'm going today. No, I'll just say. Just getting in some zero-g time. So you're going in there? Okay, so he's just saying what he said before. <laughs> okay, and down here. Let's take off my sword. we go. Nicely done. Of course, it'll be a little bit more, a little more stressful when you're hurtling through space. But just remember your training and try not to hit anything big. I can see you're itching to get off this rock, so go get the launch codes from the observatory and get out of here already. Best of luck out there, and hey, try to avoid getting yourself killed now that I've put so much time into training you. Got it? Good advice. Oh no, I didn't mean to talk to you again. There we go. Oh, this is Okay. Hey, come in and say hi to your old flight coach before your launch. I've got zero G training set up if you want a refresher. Okay. I should probably read things before I go in, but you know, sometimes it's more exciting that way. Definitely looks like the observatory. Okay. Hornfels, Gossen, Feldspar, Esker, and Slate. Outer Wilds Ventures founding members, clockwise from the top left, and the names. Hang on. Isn't there a name missing there? Esker. That means. Big thanks to these additional founding members of Outer Wilds Ventures, without whom we would never have gotten off the ground. Matthew Steinhauer, Ben Etherington, Curti Op the Pie, Jordan Frith. This must be people who paid for the Kickstarter, I guess. Outer Wilds Ventures, Timber Haas' first and only space program, was founded to explore the farthest reaches of our solar system. Feldspar was the first Hearthian to be intentionally launched into space. They completed the first orbit around Timber Hearth and later made the first of what will be many landings on our moon, the Atal Rock. This is Hal. And a statue. This remarkably intact statue was carved by the Nomai, an ancient species who dwelled in our solar system thousands of years ago. The statue provides us with our most detailed look yet at the Nomai, who appear to have been covered with a layer of fur. Note the decorative, ju decorative jewellery that has been carved as part of the antlers. Although the, their artifacts and structures have been found on almost every planet in this solar system, we still have no idea where this species came from or what happened to them. Interesting. Okay, Hal. 
Hey, hey, it's my favorite astronaut. Launch day at last, huh, buddy? It's the translator tool's inaugural flight, too. I'm so excited, it's making me nauseous. Just think, you'll be able to translate any Nomai text you want, anywhere you are. Two of us have put a lot of hours into inventing that tool, so don't break it, okay? Haha, <laughs> oh jeez, do not break it. Ah, uh, ignore me, okay? I'm just nervous. I'm not even going, the one going into space. How are you feeling? I'm excited. Good. You've only been waiting for this day since you, we were hatchlings. I can't wait to see all your training pay off. So what's the dirt? You're here to, to see the new Nomai statue? New statue? You haven't heard? Gabbro brought it back with them from Giant Steep, and Hawkfalls just visits finish prepping it for display. This is this is it right here. Neat, huh? Makes me wish we could see what a real live Nomai looks like, but I guess this is as close as we'll ever get. Check it out. Looks like they had fur. Fur is weird. This is the first fully intact statue ever found, you know. And for how old it is, it's in Great shape. Ah, oh, jeez. I got a little carried away there. Go on. You have a ship to launch. Take care of yourselves out there. You hear? So it's a museum. That's that ship. marker to say what it is. I wonder if that means it's one of ours. Watch closely. These balls move on their own. Okay. The ground is perfectly level, so what do you think causes this spooky motion? The answer is the moon. As it orbits our planet, the outer rock's gravity pulls on objects from different directions. In fact, it's pulling on you right now. Oh, they are moving too. This piece of Nomai writing was essential to deciphering their unique language. Although this text is linear, Nomai text often branches off from a central point. Interestingly, each branch tends to be written by a different author. Oh, how interesting. This is the translator. We're nearly ready. Felix and I have finished construction, and she says calibrating the device won't take that long. Felix, unfortunately, the outer rock's lack of atmosphere will make calibration simple. After all this time, I'm thrilled to finally resume our research. And it must join over here, does it? How strange. And this isn't part of it, I guess. Aside from the dwellings and structures they built, the Nomo also made art. This decorated pottery was discovered in on Brittle Hollow. Some ancient Nomo art depicts strange animals, foreign celestial objects and other subjects that can't be found in our solar system, which makes us wonder whether the Nomai originated elsewhere in the universe or simply had vibrant imaginations. Were the Nomai born in our solar system? Or were they born among other stars and planets? And if they were, how and why did they come here? These are just some of the questions we hope to answer through further Xenoarchaeological expeditions. What you see here are parts of the Nomai skeleton. We can tell from their skulls that they possessed antlers and, quite unusually, only three eyes. 
The Nomai body was almost likely was most likely adapted for living exclusively on land. The differences in the Nomai's anatomy, such as their shockingly fragile bone structure, show us that the Harthians couldn't have descended from Nomayan ancestors. It's not clear whether the Nomai origin where the Nomai originated from or why they disappeared. We hope to find more clues to this puzzle as we explore our solar system. The Nomai technology brought back from space by our astronauts has been a great boon to the Outer Wilds Ventures, to Outer Wilds Ventures, allowing us to modify expedition gear in exciting and useful ways. For example, the Little Scout now boasts a warp retrieval capability that allows astronauts to recall their scouts almost instantly. This has dramatically reduced the number of scouts lost to the depths of space. Makes sense. This crystal was taken from a Nomai ruin on Brittle Hollow. It seems to create a local gravity distortion and was most likely used to traverse steep surfaces. Try it out. Wow. Anglerfish. This anglerfish specimen was found attached to the landing gear of one of our ships that flew close to Dark Bramble. It appears well suited to living in the dark places with minimal atmosphere. If star is massive enough, it will continue to fuse carbon into even heavier elements like iron. Ultimately, the star will collapse under its own gravity and then explode in a violent event called a supernova. Based on Chert's observations, this will one day be the fate of our own sun. Okay, so I've started at the wrong end. <laughs> Stars like our sun generate light and heat by fusing hydrogen into helium. As it grows older, the star runs out of hydrogen and starts to contract. As the star's core contracts, it gets hotter, causing the outer layers to expand. The star becomes, has become a red giant. When the core is hot enough, it starts to fuse helium into carbon. read the last one. Okay, time to go upstairs. And this is Hornfalls. There you are. I just finished pre-flight observations and local conditions are good. Time to get our newest astronaut off the ground. And you'll be our first astronaut ever equipped with a Know My Translator tool. I confess, I've been giddy all day just thinking about it. We're better equipped than ever to unravel the mysteries of the Know My. You and Howe should be very proud of your work. Tell me, what's your plan once you're in space? Okay, I can say I'm going to learn more about the Nomai. I want to learn more about the Nomai. I'll meet up with other travelers. I want to go somewhere no one's gone before. I think I'll start with something small. I don't know or I'm going to wing it. I think I probably want to learn more about the Nomai. I might have guessed as much. No sense in making a translator tool if you're not going to use it to translate anything. We've barely scratched the surface of the Nomai writing in our solar system, so we still know very little about them. We've no idea if they originated here or travelled here, or why they disappeared. That tool of yours should prove indispensable in solving the mystery of this ancient species. Well then, looks like all that's left is to send you off. All in all, it's a fine day for a launch. I'm ready to get off this rock.
Excellent. You'll be needing the launch codes then. Here they are. Best get off the ground before a slate makes any more modifications to your ship, eh? Good luck out there. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Okay, so I've got the launch codes. Anything else? Oh, we've got a map. Oh, nice. I should probably think about where I want to go. Giant Steep looks like the closest, but we do have that moon. Atoll Rock, that's a little bit closer. I can zoom in, zoom out. Rotate view, pan view with these. Okay. Let's see if we can zoom in on this moon a bit. The Atoll Rock. Probably a good way to start out and maybe even visiting some of the places on this planet. Anyway, let's get back to it. Um, downstairs. I'd seen up to now. Hey, hey, so did you get a good look at the Nomai statue? The statue looked at me and opened its eyes. Whoa, whoa, the statue was doing what? So its eyes opened and then you saw images from your own memories and glowing lights flying around. You mean like a hallucination? Listen, no offence, but are you sure you're okay to launch, like, medically speaking? You know what, don't worry about it. Or, no, that statue was is definitely weird. I think I have to say the second one this time. I mean, if you're saying it happened, then I guess maybe it did, but why? Hornfells tried everything to get the statue's eyes to open, and nothing like this ever happened to them. I don't think you're going to get any answers from the museum statue, but Gabbro said they were going back to Giant Steep. Don't know which island they're going on, though. They were going back to Giant Steep. Okay. Maybe they'd be able to tell you more. On the other hand, Gabbro's, you know, Gabbro. So maybe you'd be better off searching for more info on your own. Jeez, now I'm really jealous you're going into space. Hey, see if you can use our translator tool to find out more about the statue, okay? Good luck and safe flying. Okay, Hal. space and never coming back like Felspar did? Yeah, um, Hornfell says Felspar went in away in space and didn't come back. Hornfell says Felspar was the best pilot ever, but no one knows what happened to them. Hornfell probably shouldn't be telling you stuff like this, or that's not something I want to think about right now. Yeah. But if Felspar disappeared, you might disappear too, disappear too right? You're not as good as Felspar, so really should be careful not to get lost. Thanks for that. Lovely. I don't think I had talked to him before. 
He must have been there to give me extra confidence. Full circle. Here we are at the launch tower. Into the codes and up we go. Okay. The moment of truth has arrived. So that's where I think we'll end today's video. You'll have to tune in next time for more adventures in the Outer Wilds. See you next time, everyone.